In the heart of New South Wales, broad flat plains around a town of Wyalong lie quiet and unassuming under the sun. But beneath this tranquil rural landscape sleeps the ghost of an ancient river system, a buried network of paleo channels laden with stories of geological upheaval and golden riches. Over a hundred years ago, hopeful prospectors trudged through these flat, scrubby lands, unaware that deep below their feet lay hidden rivers of gravel, sand, and gold. These concealed waterways once flowed as coursing streams in a distant epoch, carving valleys and carrying alluvial gold. Today, modern science is peeling back the layers of time to reveal their secrets, blending poetic wonder with scientific insight. The journey of the buried paleo channels in the Wailong district unfolds like a documentary, from the deep geological past through the era of gold rush drama to the cutting edge technology now mapping what the early miners could not see. The discovery of the Bland Creek Paleo Valley wasn't made during the gold rush heyday of the 1890s. Instead, its recognition as a buried gold-bearing paleo channel system emerged through modern geological and geophysical research in the 1990s. This means the ancient river, charged with gold and now entombed beneath layers of earth, remains untouched, still cradling its precious cargo in the gravels of a forgotten stream. This is the story about the discovery of a hidden river of gold in New South Wales. Eons before humans tread these plains, nature was at work sculpting the land. The Wailong district is situated on the Lachlan Fold Belt, a region of old mountains and basins. Here, an immense ancient valley, the Bland Creek Paleo Valley, formed as a depression running roughly north-south for about 130 kilometers in length and 60 kilometers in width. This Paleo Valley was not born peacefully. It was carved by powerful forces of erosion responding to tectonic change. Starting in the Paleocene, roughly 60 million years ago, the incision of the Bland Creek Paleo Valley likely began as rivers responded to a combination of tectonic uplift related to Australia's slow separation from Antarctica and regional subsidence in the evolving Murray Basin. The land began to uplift and tilt due to the continental breakup. Rivers gained new energy, and Nick Point waterfalls gnawed upstream, slicing into an already deeply weathered bedrock that was softened by ages of prior tropical weathering. In fact, the saprolite profiles, which is the term used to describe chemically weathered rock, extended 50 metres or more deep. The Bland Creek Paleo drainage system cut a broad valley into the landscape, flowing northward and feeding into the greater Paleo Lachlan River, which in those ancient times snaked westward across what is now the Riverina. This primeval valley likely had steep sides and a rugged floor. Indeed, boreholes and seismic surveys much later revealed that the Bland Creek Paleo Valley has a lopsided cross section, cut deeper on its eastern side than the western. Ridges of resilient rock rose as islands within the valley, their alignment hinting at hard bedrock or even mineralization beneath the surface. On the western side of the valley, ancient tributaries cut into the valley wall, creating narrow gorges and channels. Much later, geologists would discover that some channels on the valley margins plunge as deep as 140 meters below the surface near Tamora. One can imagine this landscape in its prime, a broad valley floor with braided rivers, flanked by weathered highlands and dotted with bedrock knobs resisting erosion. We've partnered again with Geology for this sponsored video, and this month I want to focus on something crucial, prevention. Just like in geology, the best way to handle issues is to prepare before they become problems. When it comes to skincare, the smartest approach to aging is to start taking care of your skin now before signs of aging even appear. My secret weapon lately has been Geology's anti-aging eye cream. This formula features powerful dermatologist approved ingredients working together to combat early signs of aging, reduce fine lines, and keep the delicate skin around my eyes hydrated and refreshed. The cream absorbs quickly, feels soothing, and after consistent use, I've noticed a visible improvement in the smoothness and brightness around my eyes. Geology's proven straightforward approach has earned them 41 grooming awards from top outlets like Men's Health, Esquire, and Oprah Daily, along with over 10,000 five-star reviews. Clearly, their products deliver real, noticeable results. If you want to take proactive steps towards preserving youthful skin, Geology has an amazing offer right now. Get 70% off your personalized skincare trial set, a full month for just $12. You'll also receive a free gift and up to 50% off additional products. Don't wait until signs of aging appear. 
click my link and use the provided code in the description to take advantage of this fantastic offer from Geology Today. Your future self and your skin will thank you. As the millions of years rolled on, the vigorous erosion of the Paleocene and Eocene gave way to new chapters. The climate changed, oscillating between wet and dry cycles, and the ancient Lachlan River system began to shift course and lose power. By the late tertiary, Miocene to Pliocene, about 10 to 5 million years ago, the Bland Creek Valley became a basin of deposition rather than erosion. The once active rivers laid down their burden of sediments, and the valley filled like a womb. Geologists recognised two main formations in this infill, the Lachlan Formation and the Cowra Formation. The Lachlan Formation is of late Miocene to Pliocene age, which is between 11 million to 2.6 million years ago. This was the first stage of filling. In swampy, sluggish rivers and billabongs, the valley accumulated a mix of quartz-rich sands, gravels and cobbles. The environment was waterlogged and reducing. Imagine slow-moving silty channels weaving through marshes. The deposits were poorly sorted, from sand grains up to cobbles, reflecting periodic floods washing material off surrounding highlands. The quartz content of these gravels is high, suggesting the sediments came from the weathering of quartz veins and older rocks in the uplands. These layers, a few tens of metres thick, settled in the Paleo Valley and began to hide its once bold topography. The next stage is the Cowra Formation. It's of Pleistocene age, occurring 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago. After a brief pause in deposition, perhaps a dry interval that caused a bit of erosion, a second stage of filling occurred in the Pleistocene. The climate then was drier and the flow more variable, closer to the Ice Age cycles. The Cowra Formation is characterised by brown clays and gravels laid down under more oxidising conditions, meaning the soils and sediments had more exposure to air. The gravels here appear more distributed by braided stream channels, reworking the older deposits constantly. One can picture braids of a river snaking and shifting across a broad flat, spreading fans of sand and pebbles. The oxidising environment also left its mark. Iron minerals in the sediment rusted to red-brown hues, and soil profiles developed. By the end of the Pleistocene, these processes had effectively entombed the ancient river channels under tens of metres of alluvium. The Bland Creek Paleo Valley became a valley in disguise, a broad flat plain with no dramatic surface expression of the deep channels that lay below. Thus the stage was set. The Great Lead, an Australian term used to describe an ancient river channel of Bland Creek, was hidden from the eyes of humans by blankets of younger earth. Only subtle clues, a certain moisture in the soil, a faint topographic depression, or stray rounded pebbles on the surface, hinted at the watery archives buried below. This process of landscape evolution, of valleys incising and then backfilling, is recorded in many Australian goldfields. In fact, ancient alluvial channels were recognised in the 19th century in several parts of the Lachlan catchment, and they were famously rich in gold. At Tamora, about 60 kilometres south of Wyalong, the old timers found that most of the gold, 3.8 out of 4.2 tonnes, which in today's prices are worth 610.9 to 675.2 million dollars, came from alluvial Paleo River gravels rather than the primary hard rock reefs. These buried leads in Tamora were like hidden treasure streams, some traced for up to 6 kilometres downstream from their source reefs. The Bland Creek Valley likely held similar riches, waiting for the right conditions or the right technology to be discovered. For much of human history, the buried channels of the Bland Creek Valley remain invisible, subterranean secret rivers carrying whispers of gold. Early prospectors could only find the alluvial gold that was literally at surface or in modern creeks. How could anyone know of a river channel 30 or 50 metres beneath their boots? It wasn't until the late 20th century that geologists developed tools akin to X-ray vision for the Earth's crust. High resolution airborne geophysics, airplanes mounted with sensitive instruments, began to peel away the disguise of the regolith, the layer of loose soil and sediment, and reveal the patterns below. In 1998, a concerted survey by the Australian Geological Survey Organisation flew low and tight over the Wyalong area, carrying magnetometers and gamma ray spectrometers to map subtle variations in magnetism and geochemistry across the ground. The results were astonishing. New geophysical images lit up the landscape in neon hues, tracing the outlines of paleo-drainage channels that had no surface expression. 
On the high resolution magnetic maps in particular, scientists saw snaking lineaments of high magnetic response, a dendritic or tree-like pattern of anomalies weaving through the subsurface near Wyalong. These were the ghost rivers made visible. The ancient channels contain materials that make a magnetic fingerprint distinct from the surrounding clay plains. It turns out that the alluvial sands and gravels in the Paleo channels are peppered with detrital ferruginous pisoliths, little P-shaped nodules of iron oxide, specifically magamite, that were formed in ancient soils and later washed into the rivers. Magamite is strongly magnetic, so concentrations of these iron pisoliths in the buried sand lenses cause the magnetic field to be slightly stronger above the channel. The effect is like a hidden outline of the stream path, glowing on the aeromagnetic map where none is evident on a normal aerial photograph. In the Regilif landfall map, the Paleo Valley's thick blanket of alluvial sediment contrasts with the surrounding low hills of weathered granite. The ancient channels themselves are highlighted by a grey overlay, twisting through the granitic terrain and exiting the district to the northeast. Notably, these channels run adjacent to the main hard rock gold reef area. This tantalizing proximity raises the possibility that as the quartz veins in the hills shed gold during weathering, that gold could have washed into the Paleo channels not far away. To the trained eye, the high-res magnetic image of Wyalong looks like a psychedelic roadmap of hidden rivers. The 1999 survey shows the total magnetic intensity over the district, color-coded to tease out subtle differences. Hot colors for higher magnetism, cool colors for lower. The Paleo Channel network appears as curving ribbons of slightly elevated magnetic response, roots and branches of an ancient dendritic drainage that once carried iron and gold-rich gravels. These channels trend northeastward, consistent with the old flow direction toward the Paleo Lachlan. Notably, the magnetic survey found channels even where the ground today is completely flat and featureless. They do not correspond to modern creeks at all, confirming they are relics from a different time. The ability to see the invisible like this has revolutionized how geologists explore for minerals and water. The discovery of previously unrecognized channels near Wyalong via magnetics was more than an academic exercise. It pointed to real gold potential. If those channels had once eroded the edges of the goldfield's quartz veins, they could now host auriferous gravels, rich alluvial gold deposits hidden so deeply that no prospector of the past could have imagined their existence. Moreover, from an environmental perspective, these buried sands and gravels are often aquifers. They can store groundwater, sometimes unfortunately saline. Understanding their distribution is therefore critical for regional hydrogeology and managing issues like dryland salinity. Government researchers noted that mapping paleo channels has a double benefit, finding gold and understanding groundwater. The magnetic data showed that some of the buried channels run quite close to the main Wyalong reef lines in some cases just a kilometre or two away. It's easy to imagine a scenario many millions of years ago. Torrential rains lash to Wyalong Hills, a creek swells and bursts, ripping out pieces of quartz vein from the outcrop, grinding them to pebbles, liberating fine gold and washing it downstream. In the channels, when the floodwaters slow, the dense gold particles drop out among the gravel lag. Over time, perhaps at certain bends or bedrock traps in the ancient gorge, payable placer deposits could form. Gold in such leads can be very rich, but also very patchy. Historical accounts from similar leads in Victoria and elsewhere noted that alluvial gold tends to collect in pay streaks, say on the inside bends of the old river, or where there were obstacles like buried logs or boulders. At Wyalong, because the relief was low and the gold was fine, it's possible that the alluvial deposits are thinner and less continuous than famous leads like those of Ballarat. Indeed, some comparisons made in the literature suggest New South Wales leads were not as laterally extensive as those in Victoria. But even a small buried pay streak could be significant if rich. Importantly, the juxtaposition of bedrock or reef gold and alluvial deposits in the same valley catchment is a recipe for potential wealth. In other gold fields, for example Tamora, wherever a rich reef was found, sooner or later a rich alluvial lead downstream was discovered. Essentially, the two go hand in hand in a well-preserved paleo drainage. The difference at Wyalong was that the lead got buried and preserved beyond reach. Now that it's been identified via geophysics, modern explorers can test it. By drilling or digging trenches guided by the magnetic maps, one could sample those gravels for gold content. It's a bit like drilling for oil, except the target is ancient pay dirt. So what have we learned about these channels so far? The paleo channels detected near Wyalong tend to contain a mix of sand, clay and gravel 
with the aforementioned Magami pisolifs. They are steep sided in cross section, likely incised into the bedrock granite or meta sediments below, and might be a few tens of meters wide each. They appear to form a dendritic network draining to the northeast, towards the main Bland Creek Valley. Where the channels cut through north northwest trending ridges in the valley, they may have formed natural traps or riffles for heavy minerals like gold. Additionally, evidence of surficial or near surface gold mineralization along the bedrock reinforces that some gold was eroded and became alluvial material. This prospect has not gone unnoticed. In recent years, exploration companies have taken up licenses in the West Wyalong area not only to chase deeper extensions of the known reefs, using methods like deeper drilling and even seismic surveys to image structures, but also to hunt for paleochannel gold. The allure is that mining alluvial gold from buried channels, if found in economic quantities, can often be done by open cut mining or underground gravel drives, which might be simpler than chasing narrow veins deep underground. However, it's a technical challenge. Finding the pay gravel within hundreds of square kilometers of plain requires sophisticated targeting. It's a bit like looking for a needle in a haystack, but now the haystack shape is at least roughly known thanks to magnetics. Standing on a rise at Wyalong today, one might see gentle wheat fields, sparse eucalyptus, and a far horizon, a landscape giving little hint of its dramatic underground saga. But with a bit of imagination, and the eyes of a geologist, the picture transforms. Beneath the soil, a buried valley meanders, filled with the gravels of long vanished streams. Just to the west, the rocks hide pencil thin quartz reefs that once blazed with gold, drawing thousands into the wilderness. Today, Wailong's story is being revisited with the latest technology. Airborne electromagnetic surveys complement the magnetics, essentially using electromagnetic pulses to peer into the ground's conductivity and map where ancient sandy channel sediments lie hidden. Drilling programs have been undertaken in some parts to confirm the depth of channels and to sample them. A few holes bring up rounded pebbles and even traces of gold, validating the geophysical ghost images. Each new piece of data adds to the 3D puzzle. The goal is to produce a detailed paleogeographic reconstruction of the Bland Creek River system as it was, say, 5 to 10 million years ago. By doing so, explorers can pinpoint where in that river system heavy minerals would likely have dropped out, like on inside bends, downstream of constrictions, or at confluences of tributaries, places a placer pay zone might form. This is the scientific art of gold forensics, using geology, geophysics, and geochemistry to hunt for the motherlode scattered children. Through science and perseverance, we are reading its story layer by layer, a tale written in gravel and gold, in drought and flood, in boom and bust, and who knows, the next chapter might see the golden sands of Wailong's ancient river spark a new, albeit more measured gold rush, more than a century after the first. The buried channels have kept their secret this long, perhaps soon they will finally divulge it enriching our understanding of geology, and maybe a few prospectors' pockets as well. All while reminding us of the deep time and dynamic forces that shape the land we live on. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.